Well, hello and welcome to Equippers at Home. My name is John Sparrow. I'm part of the leadership team here at Equippers Central Coast, and it really does mean the world that you are tuning in, whether it's morning, evening, maybe it's middle of the night, wherever you are, uh, whatever you find yourself doing, uh, we believe that this is going to encourage you, inspire you, and ultimately equip you for life. Um, before we get into worship, I got a few quick announcements. A uh, big one, it's Pastor Pat Sparrow's birthday this Wednesday. As my dad, I want to say a big happy birthday. We love you so much. Uh, if you have his contact, shoot him a text message, give him a call Wednesday, tell him happy birthday. Uh, we're just so honored to have him as our senior pastor at Equipper Central Coast. But hey, if you uh, are a parent and you want to, a at-home kids box for our Easter series. We, we've put together these amazing boxes um, so you can have a full Easter experience at home with your family. There's like glow-in-the-dark Easter egg hunt, some crafts, some curriculum, things that family can go on the journey together. The series is called Jesus is Light and those boxes are going to be going out over the next two weeks and so you can go to our Quippers Kids uh, Instagram page. You can email kids at equipperscentralcoast.com. Go to our website, however you want. If you want one of those boxes, we'd love to get one to you. So make sure to check that out. And hey, if you uh, would like to give, we, we are a generous church. We believe that God gave to us, and so we must give. And so if you're looking for an opportunity to give financially to our church, you can go to equipperscc.com slash give. We appreciate that so much. Uh, it's continuing to make an impact on the Central Coast and beyond. Not only are other people blessed, we believe you'll be blessed through your generosity. But if you have any more questions or if you just want some more information, you can go to our website, quippercc.com, and find everything out. Also, big news. Today, we are launching Equip You. Equip You is an online learning platform where you can find our Equip course, Foundations course, uh, we're going to have a prophetic training course coming through uh, soon. We're going to have some stuff on the gospel, Sermon on the Mount. Uh, it's a teaching platform where you can go deeper in your faith. We believe that big people, uh, the acronym BIG um, is BELONG. So belong to an e-group. Get involved in an e-group. Those are launching this week. Invest. Give financially. Join a team. Uh, log in to equip you. Really invest in your faith. And that you'll be big for that and make you a big person. <laughs> and so uh, make sure to check out Equip You and also eGroups happening this week. You can go to our website for more information. But hey, I'm going to pass it off. Uh, Whitney and Preston are going to lead us in worship today. And uh, I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to do a profound work in your life. And I'll, I'll be back in just a few minutes to bring the message as we continue our Home is Where the Heart is series. Love you so much. See you soon. Yeah. sound coming on the wind changing hearts and minds healing brokenness I feel a generation breaking through despair I hear a generation full of faith declare and I saw it will be out of the darkness we will rise and sing he is faithful he is glorious and he is jesus and all my hope is in him he is Right now he is hope and joy, love and peace and life. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. I have seen a light like the 
the break of dawn Giving blind men sight Letting lame when walk I see a generation With resurrection life We are a generation Filled with the power of Christ And our song it will be Out of the darkness we will rise and sing He is faithful He is glorious And He is Jesus And all my hope is in Him He is he is healing right now He is hope and joy Love and peace and life Yeah, yeah oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. He's paid He has paid the high And proclaim my love for Him. Yes, Jesus, you're so worthy. God, there's nobody in heaven or on earth like you. You're the foundation that we stand upon. We remind ourselves of that this morning, God. We worship you, Jesus. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. And holy. There is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus 
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Sing holy. None beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me into love To those around me Oh, oh Hello again. Uh, thank you so much for taking time to be with us this morning, this afternoon, wherever you're wa watching, whenever you're watching. Uh, it means the world. Um, and we're, I'm going to continue our series on our heartbeats. This series is called Home is Where the Heart Is. And uh, as a church, we have embraced a set of values um, that we're going to be diving into throughout the month of March. And uh, today I'm specifically going to be speaking on the value of Excel, uh, or we could call it excellence. But before we get into it, um, let me pray. I'll set the framework for what values are, why they matter, and uh, just believe that this is going to encourage you, inspire you, and really equip you for life. But Lord, thank you so much for the time that we have together. I ask that you would inspire my words, uh, that your Holy Spirit would lead us into truth, that you would do a work now that only you can do. I thank you for every person who is in, within the sound of my voice, God. Would you, right now, by your Holy Spirit, encourage, would you lift heads, uh, would you strengthen hearts, souls, minds, bodies, and uh, we genuinely believe that you've got something incredible in store for us as a church 
whether we're in person or online. And so, Lord, have all the glory, all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've, we define values um, as this, a person's principles or standards of behavior or one's judgment of what is important in life. One's judgment of what is important in life. And so as a church, like I said, we've embraced a certain set of values, um, which we've defined as heart. And values, scripturally, could be called keys. In Matthew 16, verse 19, uh, Jesus is addressing Peter. And he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And so Peter, you know, was kind of a misfit guy. He, he had gotten himself in a bit of trouble with Jesus and he was outspoken. And, but this incredible moment happens where Jesus addresses Peter as a rock. And he says, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And here in this setting, he says, I will give you the keys, the kingdom of heaven. I'll give you keys to the kingdom of heaven. So our values, we believe, are keys to the kingdom of heaven. And we actually see our, our values, these right here, honor, I'm glorifying God in everything I do, which we, we spoke on last week, excel. I'm following Christ and becoming like him. Advance, I'm using my gifts to serve God's purpose. Reach out, I'm on a mission to reach the lost. Together, I am formed for the family of God. These are our values and, and we, we explain values like banks of a river. Uh, we want momentum. We want some sort of flow of God in our church and through our church. And without values or without banks, a river soon turns into a swamp. And so we want to keep momentum. We want to see our mission accomplished. We want to see our vision come to fruition. And we believe that the way we see that through in our church and in our personal lives is to have strong values that act as banks to a river. And today I'm going to specifically talk about the value of Excel. Um, we define Excel as this, to give God our best. It's really simple, to give God our best. I'm not talking about perfection today. I'm talking about excellence, to give God our best. And I, I'm going to go into that perfection versus excellent a little bit towards the end and hopefully lead into a time of ministry for us and just see what God has for us. And uh, we base this value uh, primarily off of the character of Daniel. Um, it, it says this about Daniel in, in Daniel 6, verses 1 through 3. It says, It pleased Darius, who is a king, to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom, and over these three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm an excellent spirit was in him an excellent spirit was in him and what I, what I think we really need to understand about Daniel is that he he was like like a um a, a, a refugee he he came from one culture into this new culture and if, if you've ever studied Daniel uh, you know that when he came into this new setting in Babylon that he was given a new name his name went from Daniel which means you know God is my judge to Belteshazzar which means lady protect the king so he was undermined right from the core of who he was in this new setting and what I love about Daniel is that although he was undermined to his core identity, he never gave up an excellent spirit. He continued to show up and give his best. We read about Daniel that he chose not to eat from the king's table, that he, he wouldn't compromise his values. He wouldn't compromise his commitment to the Lord in this new setting, this challenging setting. You could only imagine, you know, every morning, afternoon, and evening when they call your name and you're addressed as lady protect the king. It's like, like my, my identity as a man is in question and and where you know god is my judge daniel means like, like god you know he's all powerful and and he's sovereign where now with this new identity god needs protecting he's not all powerful and and so you can only imagine that that rub constantly in the world that daniel was living in but still he chose an excellent spirit and people in high positions considered him to set considered to set him in a place of great honor and authority because an excellent spirit was upon him. And so I think it's amazing to embrace this spirit of excellence. And I love talking on this subject because it's so spiritual because 
in our area, this, this word apathy, probably not just in specifically our area, but, but probably just the world. Uh, we love the drug of apathy. It's just like a lack of interest, it's, you know, so lack, lackadaisical. It's a lack of enthusiasm. It's a lack of concern. And so when we speak on excellent, we're like waging war in the spirit against apathy. Um, excellence really just means to, to go the extra mile, to go a little bit further. And, you know, when uh, we, we watch a, like a hundred meter dash, I don't know if you've ever seen the finishing photograph of a hundred meter dash. Sometimes it's like by, you know, a hundredth of a second and it's just one guy's nose was just a little bit further. And so when we talk about excellence in, in its simplest form, you know, giving God our best, but really it's, it means to outperform. It means to outdo. And, and that's not like a be better than, or it's, it's when Jesus says things like, Hey, when someone asks you to go a mile, go with them two miles. When someone asks for your shirt, give them your coat as well. Or vice versa. When, when when someone slaps you on one cheek, give to them the other cheek. It's it's this type of living that's extravagant and causes us to go the extra mile. It's like, hey, your boss asked you to, you know, to perform at this level, but because an excellent spirit's on you, you, you just choose to to go another level. You know, maybe in church, like we we have this idea of tithing 10%, but maybe you go above and beyond. Like excellence is going further. It's outperforming. It's going a little bit beyond because that sets us apart with an excellent spirit. Paul says in his writings that we shouldn't be ones who work for man, but we are working for the Lord. And so whatever we do, it's this idea uh, excellence causes us to outperform. And that's something to be proud of, to, to outperform, to be extravagant in our generosity, to be extravagant in our love, to 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 outdo and outlove and outgive and I just love the idea of excellence. And so I I think it's important to know where this comes from. In Psalm 8, 1 through 9, it says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him for you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. So we read here that this, this beautiful Psalm it says again, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth? And so we can say God's name is excellent. How excellent is your name? And then we go on and we read stuff like this. And this is speaking to, to the church, to us. It says, uh, Paul says, For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom, get this, every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit and your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that what surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do here it is, immeasurably more. Excellent. He, he does more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And so we, we, we see in Psalms that his name is excellent. And then in Ephesians chapter 4, we see that our, our, in Ephesians chapter 3, we see that our name is derived from his name. And so he actually puts an excellent spirit in us. How excellent is his name? How excellent is the name, the family of God? And then it continues to say that that he does immeasurably more and his powers that work within us. So I hope this is inspiring you and encouraging you to lean into excellence, to give God your very best in whatever setting you might find yourself. And I love this. This is a Martin Luther King Jr. Quote, he says, if I cannot do great things, I can do small things in a great way. 
And so everybody can be great because everybody can serve and we can just make a decision you know, on Monday morning, heading into the office, that, that we're just going to do small things in a great way, that we're going to excel. We're going to just go a little bit above and beyond. We're going to be, you know, punctual. <laughs> we're going to, um, you know, try and give our best to our bosses, to our spouse, to our kids, to give God our best. And uh, there's, there's three specific areas as a church that we um, lean into giving God our best. And the, the first one is is with time. We want to give God our best with our time. Psalms 90 verse 12 says, Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days. What does that mean? Is it, it's like there, there's a limited time span on our existence here on earth. And I don't know about you, but I want God to teach me how to really steward and be excellent with my time. Uh, you know, a couple years ago, I went through a bit of a mental health crisis and, you know, you might know this by now, but one of the things that the doctor told me, you know, I was getting lab work done and, you know, she was going through a series of, of questions and things and I had a, something called adrenal fatigue. I had experienced some trauma with one of our kids and, you know, just there's a lot going on in a short amount of time and she said, you know, you're, you're experiencing adrenal fatigue. And she had worked with with another pastor friend of mine in the past. And he said, a lot of times you pastors, you know, you you show up to things unprepared in the name of the, you know, the kind of the Holy Spirit. She didn't know exactly how to put it. But what I had, how that relayed to me is that there's a lot of settings that I walk into that I haven't uh, premeditated or planned for or really, you know, locked out in my day, what certain meetings are going to look like, what certain messages are going to look like, what certain interactions with my wife and family are going to look like. And so because I don't manage my time correctly, which is a really practical thing, you know, you can show up and you can, you know, uh, your adrenaline kicks in and you just make it happen and it works out. But, you know, sometimes we say, man, the Holy Spirit just showed up and filled in the gap. But a lot of times that's our adrenaline just kicking in, knowing what to do and our body it doesn't can't keep up for that long living in that sort of setting. So why do I say this? Well, it's really practical. Ask God to help you to be excellent with your time, to 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 learn time management, to learn premeditating, you know, certain meetings and settings, and to really make the best use of our you know limited days. And so again, Psalm ninety verse twelve, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. We want to be excellent with our time. The other. A uh, thing we want to be excellent in is give God our the best of our talent. In Genesis 2, verse 5, it says, Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. Well, what does that mean? It means that God uh, initiated. He breathed. He He said, let there be, and there was. There was, there was creation, but one thing it was hinging on is that man would use his talent to work the ground so that there would be growth that plants would spring up and that same thing correlates here and now god has initiated things he's he's put uh, natural resources in order and a lot of times it's when our talent connects to that purpose of god they're like flourishing happens and so we want to give God the best of our talents. We don't want to make waste of the, the, the clever ability that God's given us and whatever that may be for you. You know, maybe it is teaching. Like if you know you have a talent for teaching, God has put, you know, children in front of you that, you know, that's like seed. And through your talent and your ability, you make flourishing happen for those kids in your classroom. You know, maybe it's in development and homes and, you know, God's just given you this amazing way to strategize and put together pieces to see homes built and established and even neighborhoods, um, you know, built and established because you've connected your talent with a natural resource. And maybe it's, you know, worship leading. Like God's giving you a natural ability to to sing and to lead. And when you put your natural ability, God puts a super on your natural and amazing things happen. And so we want to be excellent with our talent. We want to use what God's given us um, to see the earth flourish and spring up. The third thing we want to be excellent in, so the first was our time, teach us the number of days. The second is our talent. You know, use what God's given you to see the earth establish his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. The third thing is our treasure. 
third thing is our treasure. And, you know, we, we talk about money shamelessly in this church. And so why, why do we talk about money? It's because in the Bible, there's 500 verses on prayer. There's 500 verses on faith. And did you know there's a, over 2,000 verses on money? And actually, you know, Jesus spoke in parables or stories. And there, there, we, we see like 38 parables and 16 of the 38 parables are stories that Jesus used to expose our, our, our humanity to his kingdom are about money, 16 to 38. And so, you know, how we handle our money actually reveals volumes about our priorities, our loyalties, and our affections. And I've heard over and over, like, if you want to see what someone values, look at their calendar, their time, and their bank account, what they're spending money on. And that's a really good indicator of what you value. And so as Christians, as as Jesus followers, we want our treasure to speak volumes about what we are giving God in giving him our best. And so, you know, we believe that God has given us the ability to generate wealth, that that's a biblical principle that we can generate wealth. And it's not money that's evil. In 1 Timothy 6.10, it says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So it's not money that's evil. It's the love of money. And the pursuit and the greed that comes from earthly riches. And, you know, a lot a lot of times people, you know, they say like, oh, well, money made him fill in the blank. You know, it made you a bad person. Like you turned into to some awful human being because you made a bunch of money. But what, what we know is that money just makes you more of who you already are. If you're generous with little... And the Bible puts it like this. If you're faithful in the little things, you'll be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And so, you know, if you are are on a career path and you have goals financially, and maybe you're not there yet, I would encourage you to be really faithful with the small amount you have. Money simply makes you more of who you already are. If you're generous now, you'll be generous later. If you're stingy now, you'll be stingy later. If you love money now, you're going to love money even more when you have more of it. And so it's important to keep those things in check and in balance. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Jesus says this profound statement right after he goes through a long list of what people worry about, what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, where the roof is going to come from over your head and you know he said these are all things that pagans run after you know not so with you you run after the kingdom you seek first the kingdom of god and all the other stuff the clothes the food the shelter like your basic human needs will be taken care of if you seek first my kingdom i think it's amazing you know as a church we we believe in the principle of the first fruits and that means that we believe that we give god the first tenth of all our income. And for some people, that's just the starting point. Because I think it's funny, you know, sometimes we think like, okay, 10 is God's, 90 is mine. I just want to remind you something, all of it's God's. He's so generous that he has given you income. He's given you, uh, you know, a job to make a salary, what, however the income is for you. Like God's provided that, and so it's all his. And what we do is we prioritize his kingdom by putting the first fruits, the first 10% back into his kingdom, sowing into his house, into our local church, and just saying, reminding your soul who this money belongs to. And also, I believe if I am faithful to sow the 10%, God's going to give me wisdom. And he's actually going to make that 90 go further than the 100% ever could just by holding on to it. And so... You know, there's reasons for tithing in it throughout the Bible. And uh, I'll just read a few of those reasons. One of the reasons is it teaches the discipline of giving. We believe you start with tithing and then giving generosity will leak into other portions of your life. Matthew 23, 23, we can learn that tithe is holy. It's a holy thing. It's set apart and it belongs to God. It's not ours in the first place. Uh, it releases the purposes of God according to Luke 16, 10. It brings an open heaven, according to Malachi 3. It brings protection, also according to Malachi 3, verse 11. And it actually deepens our relationship with God when we choose to tithe. 
when we choose to to be excellent in our treasure and put him first because we have to trust him that he's going to fill in the gaps and so we believe to be excellent in our time teach us to number our days it's, it's really simple it's really practical today but i believe it's going to release something of god so we're excellent with our time we're excellent with our talent don't don't hold don't be selfish what god's gifted you to do and who you are in this earth and also we're faithful and we want to be excellent with our treasure we want to go above and beyond in our generosity and so uh this before i wrap up i, I want to you know talk about the difference between excellence and perfection excellence is to give god our best and when you give god your best you read it you 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 can sleep after <laughs> you can lay your head on the pillow and say you know what i i gave god the best i did the best i could with what i had you know it might not be the prettiest thing and not might not look the best sound the best you know it might really not have outperformed but i can just rest knowing that i gave god the very best i knew to give but Perfection will always leave you feeling shamed. It'll leave you condemned. It'll it'll leave you thinking, man, I could have done more. I, I should be this and I should be that. And it'll always compare. And so we are not about perfection. The kingdom is not about perfection. Jesus did say, be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. But that does not have to do with your human effort. That's the righteousness of God. That's what Jesus comes and does on your behalf but when it comes to your time your talent your treasure please do not fall into the trap of perfection and being your own biggest critic we love that there's an excellent spirit on our church we love that there's an excellent spirit on you who's watching that you'd be set apart that you would be distinguished as one who goes above and beyond and really excel um, to give god your best but this has nothing to do with perfection I love the the story of uh, Michelangelo when he was painting the Sistine Chapel in Italy. I don't know if you've ever been to Italy, but as you you know roam some of the cathedrals, you look up and you know it, it's a significant distance from where you're standing to the artwork that's on the ceiling in some of those uh, beautiful cathedrals. And you know you just think, man, there's there's a lot of detail up there, and there's detail that the human eye can never see from where you're standing on the chapel floor. And someone challenged Michelangelo at one point. They're like, why such detail? Like no one's ever going to see the detail that's put into your artwork on the Sistine Chapel. And he responded with something so profound. He said, yes, but God will see. Yes, but God will see. And that really explains what excellence is. Excellence is this idea that we do everything unto the Lord. It's an extension of our worship in the way that we work, in the way that we love, in the way that we give. It's an extension of our worship. And yeah, maybe people will never see what happens behind the scenes. Maybe your boss will never acknowledge you going above and beyond. Maybe there's not a promotion attached to it. But just like Michelangelo, yes, I'm aware that no, some people may never acknowledge, they'll never see, but God will see. And so we can't think that God's up there, you know, looking for some sort of perfection and that we're going to be, you know, judged and criticized if, if we're not doing our best all the time. No, no, no. Just do the best with what you got as an extension of your worship to him because he gave you his very best. And I want to wrap up, you know, explaining to you this morning, this afternoon, wherever, however you're watching that God is excellent in the way he reached us. See, there, there's a lot of stories, uh, you know, myths that have gone throughout generations and generations about salvation or what people think um, their God would do or offer them to be what we would call saved or, you know, to either enter and, you know, re reincarnate a certain way or e experience eternity a certain way or just enter into the abyss a certain way. And, you know, there's a lot of myth and there's a lot of stories attached to different gods and different you know, theologies, if you will, out there. But what I love about our God is that it, it wasn't so much about us giving our best to get to him. It was about him giving his best to get to us. See, the Bible says in John three sixteen that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, his beloved son, his very best See, throughout biblical history, the, the firstborn son was the pride. 
He he was the rightful heir to the throne. And, and God the Father gave his very best, his firstborn only son, so that we might experience eternity with him. And so, hey, this whole thing about giving our best, it was initiated by God himself. He gave his best to get to us. And I don't know where you're at with God today as you're watching, but we never want to wrap anything up. We never want to leave you without an invitation to know God in a personal way. We want to make sure you know that there's a way out of your sin, of your shame, of your addiction, of your brokenness, that Jesus Christ himself is the answer. He said of himself that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the answer to your brokenness to your insecurity, to your failures, to your shortcoming, to fill in the black, fill in the blank. And so today, be, before we wrap up, I want to pray a simple prayer with you. If you want to walk in relationship with your heavenly father by confessing Jesus Christ, his beloved son, as your Lord and your savior, what happens is we repent the Bible says repent in times of refreshing will come. Repentance can sound scary, but it literally just means to turn around. Just turn towards God. And so we're going to give you that opportunity today to just turn towards God. And uh, I'm going to pray a simple prayer. If that's you this morning, you, you want to turn towards God and uh, enter into relationship with him. It'll transform your life forever, but it's really simple. And so, hey, if that's you and uh, maybe you are a believer and you're watching this, why don't you pray this prayer with me as we wrap up. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sins. And today, I turn towards you and I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. I trust you with my past, I trust you with my present, and I look to you for my future. I thank you that in you, all things are made new. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Look, congratulations if you prayed that prayer for the first time. Um, we'd love to, to contact you, get a hold of you. You can go to equippercc.com slash connect or just go to equippercc.com. However you can get to us, please do. We hope that at some point we would see you in person or we'd put, be able to put a face with a name. Um, but until then, we would love to extend our open arms to get you involved in community. The best thing you can do from here is get involved with other people who love Jesus that are going to encourage you and inspire you. But hey, thanks again for tuning in. It, it, it means the world. And uh, I hope that you'll continue to join us through this series called Home is Where the Heart Is as we discover the values of Equippers Church. And again, these aren't just values for church. These are values for life that we believe translate to seven days a week, 365 days a year, and that we'll see God's kingdom come. But hey, love you, and I hope to see you soon. God bless.